Hi, I'm Timothy Brussella, and this morning I'm discussing a little bit of anti-differentiation with my Math 1325 class. And realize we're starting, we're reversing our work derivative rules. Instead of them giving us a function and asking uh, what's the derivative, now they're going to be giving us a function and saying, here's the derivative, go back to the original function. So we are reversing the derivative rules, and we're going to start off with the question, can you give me a function that can be differentiated to give you f prime of x equals 2x? And yeah, we can do that. Going backwards, it's not hard to uh, realize that x squared, if you differentiated x squared, that would give you back 2x. And I claim there's a lot more functions than just x squared. f of x equals x squared that can be differentiated to give us uh, back 2x. Can you think of another one? Hmm. How about f of x equals x squared plus 4? The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 4 is 0. So yeah, that would give us f prime of x equals 2x. Can you think of another one? Maybe f of x equals x squared minus the 1 third. Once again, at the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of that negative 1 third is 0. In general, hopefully you're seeing the pattern. You can stick on any number you want to here. And the constant term would go to 0. So I'd say x squared plus c. This x squared plus c, where c is any constant uh, uh, number, can be differentiated to give us back 2x, and x squared plus t, uh, c is called the family of antiderivatives. There are infinitely many antiderivatives because you could use any real number there as the constant term that you wanted to. So this x squared plus c is called the family of antiderivatives. We're going to introduce some other uh, terminology now. Or oh, some notation, I should say. Rather than writing out, what function can be differentiated to give me f prime of x equals 2x? I could denote that. This little squiggly symbol I'm writing is called an integral symbol. Put the function, the derivative there that I'm looking at, 2x. And I have to tell people, after the last uh, topic, two topics, implicit differentiation and related rates, we should see that uh, the importance of telling us what's the variable. This is saying when you're differentiated in terms of x, uh, what function would give you a derivative of 2x? And this is go, uh, called the family of antiderivatives, and we would say that that's x squared plus my constant c. That little squiggly is called the integral symbol. And uh, let's see, the integral of f of x dx is called an indefinite integral. And yeah, there are such things as definite integrals, but we're not up to them uh, yet. And I have a couple of antiderivative rules that I want to state. Antiderivative rules. Don't start groaning. We're not going to have as many antiderivative rules as we had derivative rules, so at least not at this point. Let's see, the first one. The antiderivative of a number in terms of x. The antiderivative of just a number, what can you differentiate to give yourself just a number? Well, a number times x plus the constant c. And the second one, the antiderivative of x to the n power. 
This is the power rule of differentiation. We're undoing that. Think about how we normally differentiate, okay? If we're differentiating, don't write this down, but if we're differentiating, normally if we wanted to differentiate x to the fifth power, let's say a 2x to the fifth, we'd multiply and then we'd subtract 1 to get a power of 4. So the first thing we do, we'd multiply and then we would uh, subtract 1 to get the new exponent. We have to do the opposite operation in the opposite order. So to go backwards, when you're given the derivative, you got to add 1. So we're going to have to add 1 to get the new exponent. And then we're going to have to undo that multiplication. What undoes multiplication? Dividing. And how do I say that uh, algebraically? We're going to add 1 to the new exponent. And we're going to divide by the new exponent. And we still have that constant C. And for the time being, basically, those are the two general antiderivative rules that we have. Let's do, uh, let's see, suppose I wanted the antiderivative of 4 in terms of x. The antiderivative of uh, the num just a number by itself, that would be 4x plus my constant c. If you differentiate 4x, you get back 4. The derivative of the uh, number by itself goes to 0. And the antiderivative of, let's say we had a 3x to the fifth. What can we differentiate to give ourselves 3x to the fifth? take the 3. We're going to do the opposite operation in the opposite order. So we have to add 1. And then we divide. We add 1 to get the new exponent. And then we divide by the new exponent plus the constant C. So let's see. That's a 3x to the 6th all over 6 plus C. And this is just a convenient coincidence. We can cancel there and just get x to the 6th over 2 plus my constant c. And I have some examples that I printed out from my math lab. I printed out some homework problems from my math lab and I thought we would do a few of them. And to move us quicker, I think we'll do one, two, three, five, and six. To move this quicker, you'll notice I have, where is this? There. I've already written the problems down for us, the ones that I want to do. And, oh, by the way, you'll notice it's just saying find the antiderivative. And down here in the instructions, it says you see as an uh, arbitrary constant. It can be a capital C or a lowercase c. Uh, my math lab takes either one of them. So, here we go. First of all, we're looking for the family of antiderivatives of 4x cubed, and x is the variable we're working with. So that would be a 4x to the, add 1, 3 plus 1, divide by 3 plus 1, we still have our plus a constant c. Oh, this is going to work out very nicely. That's just a 4x to the 4th over 4 plus c. And I can cancel the 4s to get the four, that 4 and that 4 to get just an x to the 4th plus c. And that agrees with what we know. If you differentiate x to the 4th, Bring the 4 down, subtract 1. Yeah, you're going to get 4x cubed. Oh, I think this is one that we I just made up a moment ago. Maybe that's why I chose the 4. Uh, isn't that what I used in the example over there? Yeah. The antiderivative of 4 in terms of x is just 4x plus c. If you're in, remember our two antiderivative rules. 
If it's just a number, you stick the X on and remember the plus C. If it's a variable raised to a power, you add one to get the new exponent and then you divide by the new exponent. And this is a sum or difference. We know when we're differentiating a sum or difference, we just differentiate the terms individually. Likewise, when you're going backwards, you just start anti-differentiating the terms individually. So you take the 12x, add 1. That gives us an x cubed. Divide by 3 minus a 9x. What's going to be the power on this x here? What power will we put up there on that x? Well, yes, 2. That's like a 9x to the first. Add 1. That's an x squared. Divide by 2. What's the antiderivative of 3 by itself? Just a 3. So we stick on an x. And we don't forget our plus c. And this reduces pretty nicely. 12 divided by 3, that's a 4x cubed minus a 9 halves x squared plus 3x plus my constant c. And you'll notice now I'm skipping down to number 5. The reason being, when I printed out these problems, notice 3 and 4 are very similar. Just there were only three terms here. There were four terms, but it's still very sim uh, similar. Oh, number five, 18 square roots of x. Hmm. What's our trick when we differentiate? No, part of me, it's not 18 square roots of x. It's 18 square roots of y in terms of y. So what's our trick for differentiating radicals? It's the same thing we've been doing all semester. So we'll have to rewrite that square root of y as 18y to the 1 half. And now I claim we can use that uh, rule number 2. We can use rule number two. We have y to the one-half power, so you're going to have to add one to get the new exponent and uh, divide by that new exponent. So that's 18. Add one, one-half plus one. Divide by one-half plus one plus my constant C. 1 half plus 2 halves, that's 3 halves. So we have 18. Y to the 3 halves, all divided by 3 halves, plus C. And uh -oh, I'm running out of room, so we have a compound fraction here. To simplify a compound fraction, I multiply by what I call the minor denominator. The minor denominator is 2. I'll multiply above and below by 2. That'll give me 2 times 18. That's a 36 y to the 3 halves all over 3 halves times 2. The 2's cancel, just leaving us a 3 plus my constant C. And there's one other thing we can do. 36 divided by 3 gives me a 12. Y to the 3 halves plus my constant C for my antiderivative. Notice what we did. We took, uh, we rewrote the radical using an exponent. That's nothing new. We've been doing that since we started differentiating. Then we added one to get the new exponent, and we divided by the new exponent. Well, we had a compound fraction. We had a fraction down there in the denominator, so we multiplied above and below by two. 
2 times 30, uh, 18 gave me the 36. The 2's canceled, leaving me with the 3, simplifying to y to the 3 halves plus c. And any questions there? Take a moment and look over those two in particular. Let's see. And I think I'll take a break right now and I'll pick up here with the, uh, some more uh, antiderivative problems, okay? Bye-bye for now. I'm going to take a break.